What's up guys and welcome to Hand of Fate. This is a new game releasing today, February 17th, 2015, and it's going to be available on the PlayStation 4 and the PC via Steam. Apparently in the future it will be released on the PS Vita and that'll be really awesome, but for now it's only on the PS4 and PC. This is a card game brought to life and what that means is while it is a card game, there is actually like combat sections that are really cool where you actually get to use a character to beat up other dudes. We'll get more into that as we join the game here. So with this game there's a story mode and an endless mode. Here we'll be playing the story mode just because it's easier to explain the game that way. And the more you play the story mode, the better the endless mode experience is because you get more and more cards to enjoy the game with. So let's head into level three here, which is Queen of Dust. And this one's pretty challenging. It isn't too hard, it isn't too easy. Even when you face the Queen of Dust again, what will you tell her? She has no use for men like you with noble causes in their heart. Before we hop into the game, we'll use the deck builder here. And this is pretty interesting. We have equipment cards and encounter cards. Equipment cards, basically you have swords, weapons, shields, armor, that kind of stuff. And then in the encounters card, you'll have things like events, places, people that you have encounters with. And you either get something from it, maybe a chance, maybe an item. It's very interesting and we'll hop more into that as we go along. You can choose your own deck if you're experienced enough in the game or you can use a recommended deck, which is what I enjoy doing, and even replaying the levels will give you a more in-depth experience as you continue through, because right now my deck is bigger than when I actually first did this level. It's 22 each, before it was like 15 each, so the game's gonna be broader and more experience-filled because I'm going back and playing it now. But let's start the game now, and our goal is to get to the end to beat the Queen of Dust, who is gonna be our main boss. How that happens is we sort of have different levels throughout this game, do you understand what it is we do now? Or did I rush you through the rules, pushing you into the play before you were prepared? No, Mr. Card Dealer, I'm pretty on point. Basically, we'll go through these four cards and get to the end of it, and that'll bring us to another level with more cards, and then to another level with more cards where there'll be a boss at the end, and then the whole game will be completed. So why don't we hop on? and see what our first card is. It is a Maiden. This is a pretty nice one because we always benefit from this one. Basically, a Maiden comes by and gives us a choice as what we want. We can ask for a longer life. We can ask for supplies, gold, or to be blessed. For now, I'm gonna be taking gold because gold can be super duper helpful and it's just really what I'm looking for. So we can pick up gold. She's gonna be confused by that, but that's okay. She's gonna give us 30 gold I'm here. Sure grateful for that. And then 15 gold here, hopefully a bigger one, and it's gonna be 40 gold, excellent. It's gonna put us at 85 gold, which is pretty darn decent for earlier in the game like this. So she's gonna head off now and we can move on. Now when we move each card, we lose one food. If we get to zero food, we end up losing 10 health every move. So it's very important that we stay on top of our food. This game is really fun and really addicting. I've been playing it all day and it's I don't want to ever stop it's really stinking fun and I'm not really the kind of person who enjoys too many card games but let's um, pick up mr. Lionel here and now mr. Lionel is a really interesting one basically he is the goblin disguised as a man and he comes up to you and you have the option to do several things for him and now that I have 20 gold I even have the option to give him 20 gold now it's all based on chance with mr. Lionel and many other cards I might do g ask him what he needs and he will do something that he won't do the next time I ask him what he needs so there's a chance you want to just play it smart if you have food maybe give it to him but I only have eight food that's not a ton but we got a ton of gold so let's give him some gold and see what happens. Occasionally losing his pace and moving different coins around randomly, he attempts to count the gold you place in front of him. This carries on for a while before he, quite calmly and deliberately, swallows each of the coins one by one. Now, let's see what I have for you. He then sits considering you for, for a while before slapping on the table. Aha! I know what you need. Here. Okay, so it gives us a sack that we reach into and it gives us one weapon guard. Hopefully this weapon card will be good. It is a Scorching Zeal. Now this is one I have never picked up before and it has a fire element to it. Equipment with this trait burns the flame of the Ancients doing extra damage. However, Lava Golems will shrug off the fire attacks with ease. Okay then, so this is still pretty good because we probably won't be running into Fire Golems in an earlier level like this. Either way, there is also Holy Damage which will be great against the Undead. So overall, this is a very big success and we're gonna be equipping that sure, now. Sure, that's the right approach. I'm positive 
that that's the right approach. Don't even question me on that, buddy. But let's go. He's gonna sprint out the door, and we're gonna move on to our next card, and this will be Hitch a Ride. So we can it's choose to stick brain. around and see what that card Certainly. on the left is, or we can move on to the next area. Seeing how we're good on health, food, and gold, I don't have much of a reason to go to that card, so we're gonna Hitch a Ride to the next area. And you can see this one's gonna be a little bit more Think different, a little more challenging. This game. You continue to die, yet we reset the board each time. One has to wonder how it is possible to truly lose. I know, right? This guy is really cool. He has an interesting character dynamic. What he says is really worth listening to. I know I've been talking over it, but that's just because, you know, he talks a lot and I need to be able to explain the game. But he's a really cool character. And we got a shop, which is awesome. So the shops are very useful because you can buy and sell things. Um, and depending on the shop, there are different types of shops to sell and buy different things. I'm not sure what this one's gonna have for us, so why don't we head in? There is a little bit of a loading here. You can see everything's sort of frozen as it loads in the shop, but here we are, the music kicks in. I just have to say, this game is really fabulous so far. I've been really enjoying it, I've been hooked on it, and there's been some minor issues, some bugs. I've had the game crash here on my PS4 before, so that wasn't very good. Overall, it seems to be a little bit buggy, but over time, we have been still enjoying the game. So, you can see here we have to be able to buy and sell items, we can heal our wounds if we were damaged, and we can buy food if we feel like we're low enough. So let's check out what we have to sell. I'm gonna sell my axe because I simply do not need it anymore with this Scorching Zeal. So I'll sell that and gain the three gold that I'll get from that. I'm gonna hold on to the shield though, because that's very, very, very helpful. Let's uh, head back and then buy an item. Well, let's see what we have in here. We had the shield, which we already have, so no need to buy that. The chains of rage, which can be helpful, but it's really only helpful against magic dealers and ranged attacks, but you don't run into that too much in earlier in the game. It's mostly like melee combatants, so we're not gonna do that right now. We also have the healer's ring. Whenever the player receives healing, they also gain plus one gold. No benefit if they were already fully healed. No thank you, and then we have the defense line. Uh, during combat, every hit you sustain increases your speed and weapon strength. That actually might be worth going for. We're going to check out the buy food, see if there's any, like we might buy like one thing worth of food right now. Um, there we go. So let's go and get that armor, because that will actually be super duper helpful. And then we'll spend the rest of our armor money now. Gives you the proportional strength and power of a barbarian, which you are on closer examination. All right, then we're gonna spend the rest of our money on food, just in case we need it. We now have 10 food, which is pretty good. Let's uh, head out of the shop now, though. We don't need to buy or sell anything else. And this will be my time to pull up the inventory as we get back on the main area here. If you press the touchpad on the PlayStation 4, you can see different things you can equip. Now, when it comes to things right now, um, I don't have too much, so it's not going to give me a big option, but basically I can select here, and if I had any different shields to equip, I can equip them here and everything else with everything else. We also have blessing and curses. Basically, a blessing is a good thing, a curse is a bad thing, no duh. They will stick with you in for basically the rest of the game. I don't think there's actually a way to get rid of them, at least I haven't discovered a way in my point in the game. But basically, Scared you can have a good amount of these. I haven't reached a maximum of what you can have of these. Right now, we do have some type of curse, I believe. In combat, the player's movement speed is reduced by how much the gold they possess. So yeah, that is a curse. The more money we have, the worse we do. I wasn't even aware we had this curse. But yeah, there's something that we have to be wary of. So it's a good thing that we just spend all of our cash. So let's head back now, and let's do the card at the bottom and see where this brings us. It is the goblins. Oh, these guys are not fun. Okay, so basically, these guys are gonna steal some of our stuff, and the only way to get it back is to beat the tar out of them in combat, and this is where the card game comes to life. We're gonna go in here and really actually use controls to beat up these goblins. And this I really, really like, because as I got older, I sort of stopped enjoying card games because I, I hated looking at a picture in a card and imagining the scenario. I wanted to be able to live it, and that's why I fell in love with video games. And this properly mixes the two ever so eloquently. Now, this game doesn't have the most complex combat ever, and here we go running into another glitch in the game. Like, there's no sound here. This is not a recording issue. This is a game issue. Now, like I said, I've been playing this game probably for a total of three or four hours now, and this isn't something I found super common, but still annoyingly so, I'd say. 
Not only that, but the game crashing previously. But basically, the combat's pretty simple. These guys are aimed to run away. They aren't aimed to attack, so it isn't too difficult. But basically, we press square to attack. We can press triangle to shield, circle to stun with our shield, and then we can X to roll. And we'll see more combat as we continue through because we will have to do combat to uh, fight some of the bosses. And boom, take this dude down. Oh, oh no, he actually ran away. That's not good. Oh god, oh god, come back here. Oh, so it looks like they got away with some of my stuff. Darn it, that's not good at all. So they got away with some of my stuff, which is pretty much a bummer. Oh, there we go. So, with the goblin threat dealt with, you continue on your way. We missed out on some stuff there. We could have actually gotten more gold from them. Um, I don't think we actually like lost any of our stuff. They didn't steal our shield or any of our weapons. That's a very, very good thing. Um, let's move to the left now. And this is the Twisted Canyon. Okay, then. You see a weapon glinting in the sunlight, lying next to a skeleton at the bottom of the canyon. Walls of the canyon are covered in thick vines, protecting, per perfect for climbing. So we can either climb down here, or we can leave it. Now, if we climb down here and try to get this weapon, it is a game of chance. We have a 25% chance in this specific scenario to lose and get hurt. So let's just play the game of chance and see how we do. We fail! No! So we will end up getting hurt. We will slip down the cliff and fall painfully, and we will lose or pull one health pain card. Um, let's see what it'll be. It'll be losing five health. Which is actually pretty good because usually you will lose five out of your total health. So that's actually, we lucked out there for failing. But we still retrieve the weapon, so we still re get a weapon. What's it gonna be? A huge hammer. I'm not really looking into this, so yeah, we're going to keep it where it is. We can even go back to the shop if we wanted to um, trade that. But for right now, we're just gonna keep moving forward. And we're going to go to the forest escape, so this is going to bring Let's us to the next area again. And see what lies beyond. Will do. Let's take the forest path and go into the next area, which should be the last one now, now, I believe. You come closer and closer to the final battle. Let's see where that will lead. Okay then, so let's move on to this card. And it's going to be Ratman Hunting. Let your supplies run so short. You are on risky ground. Okay then, so let's take on some Ratman here. This is yet again going to be another part of combat. And this one's going to be fun because we're actually going to be in combat. We're actually going to be fighting these enemies. They're not going to be running away from us. And it's going to be fun because the combat, it isn't too extensive. It isn't the most groundbreaking combat ever, but it's actually rather basic, but it's still really enjoyable. It does what it aims to do. And that mixed in with a really fun card game is just really, really awesome. So let's take out these evil ratmen. And usually you have these really nice, like, environments. So we have a weapon ability here, as you can see, and it does some cool weapon stuff, which is cool. This is the first weapon I've seen with a weapon ability. And you can see that the sound is cutting out again. <laughs> I don't understand what's with this. This is really weird. But let's beat these guys up a little bit more. Come on, you can do it. Yep, there we go. This weapon's really good, but there we go. Took him out, too. And you can see the environments are really nice. You run into a fair variety of environments, which is really, really cool. And it really just makes it worth playing through and doing the combat and stuff. So we destroyed these guys. What is our spoils? Looks like they didn't actually drop anything, which is a bummer. What's this going to be? Asleep in the forest? Spirits roaming the darkness. With the struggles, the boundaries are weaker than they've ever been. Okay, so this is a new card for me. While sleeping in the forest, you are jolted awake by a voice calling your name. You see a vaguely human-shaped ghost rushing towards you. Now, before I continue, you can see that he has pulled out a token to his right. That is very important. If he pulls out a token, you want to prioritize getting this card right and succeeding in whatever task it gives you because a token will give you more cards at the end of the game. So the more tokens you get, the more cards you're going to be getting, which is really fun and really awesome and makes the game more enjoyable. So you are quick to your feet, weapon already in hand. The ghost stops abruptly, hand signaling that it means no harm. Its voice is weak and distant. You you forget me already? Has this place already corrupted you so? Attack the ghost or lower your weapon. This seems pretty threatening, so I think I'm, but I mean, it's like, for now I don't know what's going on. Let's just lower our weapon. I should not be here. I fear his servants already know where I am. For a brief moment, the ghost pale's eyes feel achingly familiar. 
please come home soon. You blink and the ghost is gone. At your feet is a bag of food. The dealer draws you one food game card. This card's token is now yours. So we succeeded and we got the token, which is awesome. Now we also gained five food, which is great because we were actually running out. And that's awesome, we got the token. So now let's uh, move up this way. What do we got? We got the traveling village, did that say? The tra traveling mage, it said. So this is another shop, so we might as well go in and see what this vendor has in store for us. And hopefully it's something good. But I just wanna say this game is really great so far. If you can get over the sound issues that it seems to be presenting, and then mix in with the one crash that I've had, the game's great, and if you can find your way getting by that, that these are issues that are most likely going to be patched soon. But yeah, let's see, we can buy items here. Let's see what this ma magician has in store for us. The uh, plunderer's cap, when you draw supplies, instead of draw two, instead draw two and pick one. Okay, so it gives us a, the power of choice. And this is the alchemical silver. So we have a good amount of stuff here, but I can't afford any of it. I can also sell some items. I'm gonna be selling the, um, the sledgehammer here. There we Sometimes go. Sometimes form follows function and vice versa. In this case, it's called a huge hammer. You take a guess. <laughs> okay then. Um. Now lizard men really haven't shown up too much, so I'm not gonna worry about that helmet. I really like Dam Damocles, but we don't have the money for it. So maybe I'll come back to this shop sometime later to buy Damocles because it's a really awesome activated cooldown item in game that does some major damage. It's great against bosses, I've felt. So we'll come back there. But now let's head on to this card, and we have Queen of Dust already, so it looks like it's too late. Again. Have you properly prepared yourself this time? So now we'll be heading in and facing the Queen of Dust. Like I said, this will be the boss of this level. And hopefully we do okay. We have nearly full health, so I'm pretty confident going into this that we'll be okay. Basically, it's going to be pretty tough, though, because not only do you have the boss, but they also have fellow enemies going around. And we get two of dust, which means we're going to be fighting the Queen of Dust and two lackeys. Not going to be fun. And here she is, ever so menacing. Queen of Dust and her, and her fancy thing. Now, it's really weird because the sound issue hasn't popped up until I started trying to record this game. Before I did so, it wasn't having this issue, so maybe... In some bizarre way, me recording it is giving it this issue, but oh man, I'm getting my butt kicked. Here, let's, um, L1 here, boom, pull that on down, nice. And now these guys really shouldn't be too hard. We are already at 72, but there we go, we already killed her. This weapon's really, really good. So now we can go over here and destroy this. Come on, yes, awesome. So now that is out for the count. Oh wait, no, it still has a little more left. I thought it broke there. <laughs> there it goes. Now we can go back. Now when we start a new level, we start from scratch again. So unfortunately, even though this weapon is awesome, we will not keep it. But there we go, this level is complete. And there it is, it's so bright. Take it, and what will we unlock here? Probably not too much because I've already completed this level in the past, but we got and one that token, nice, so that's awesome. So often those who beat Plowshare to sword die by the grim instruments of their industry. Still, she fought well and bravely, which is all I expect from my pawns and players. Good, <laughs> see he's a good guy. So we'll open the one token we achieved here. We usually you get at least three or four in a level that you've never played before. But here um, we have one card and it is asleep in the inn. Better than nothing. But there we go, that is a quick in game of Hand of Fate. It is so fantastic, I really enjoyed this game. And like I said, I'm typically not the kind of person who really indulges in card games. I can't wait for this game to hit the Vita to enjoy it on the go. I feel like it's gonna be a perfect fit for that. But either way, this is Hand of Fate. You can find a link to the game in the description if you're interested. And if you enjoyed the video, please consider giving it a like and sharing it with your friends and family and commenting in the comments section below. Either way, I'd like to thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye.